bed. We get to film in a bedroom and not a bathroom. This is historic stuff. Just like who was the Joker for the casino ladder match because you don't need a cowboy hat to become a Joker. That is right, Hangman Page is back. We have a secondary women's championship, which I am so excited for. Um, CM Punk versus Daniel Garcia on Rampage, sign me up for that, and so much more as we dissect the two year anniversary show for AEW. Welcome to a brand new episode of Can We Talk Wrestling, and we are starting. The show started off with an eight-man tag team match. It was the Super Elite of Kenny Omega, Adam Cole, and the Young Bucks versus Christian, Daniel Bryan, Jungle Boy, and Luchasaurus. So, there was a couple issues with this match. Obviously, there were a lot of rough spots and there were some botches, but the match was amazing. These eight superstars really know how to work each other. They're so good in the ring, and no matter what or who they're against, they can always put on good matches. I don't know if Christian's hurt. <laughs> I've been trying to find out for like the past two hours because I'm filming it at like 11.08. I've been trying to find out for the past two hours if Christian's hurt because Christian was pulled from this match. Like the match was going on and then he landed wrong or something and he got hurt. So, ooh, did not mean to do that. So I don't know if he's definitely hurt I'm hoping he's okay. If he's not okay, well, wishes, of course. You know, we don't like seeing people injured, especially because someone like Christian has a history of injuries, whether it's with concussions especially. This match was really good, though. Um, team faces lost. Of course, it's Super Elite won with cheating. And I'm really excited, you know. This was really good and a great way to start off the second anniversary. I mean, if you even look at, like, a year before, right, the Young Bucks were still faces. Omega, this was before Omega and Catalyst were teaming. Cole was in NXT. Brian was still in WWE. Like, it's just crazy to see like where everyone is a year later. And for the TNT Championship, Open Challenges are back. It's Sammy Guevara versus newly signed Bobby Fish. That is right, he is signed. He has an all elite graphic. I am super excited about this. We are halfway there. Now, Tony Khan, if you could just get Kyle and Roderick. We'd be on good terms. We'd be on very, very good terms. So I will shout out Bobby because he came out to Red Dragon's theme song. And for someone like me that loves Ring of Honor, like, I appreciate that. I was like, yes, Bobby. This match was really good. I have to say that Bobby looked a lot better in this match than he did in his cu final couple matches in NXT. I know that before he got, like, before he got released, he just came back from an injury and stuff. So I don't know if maybe that had to do with it as well. But this match was actually really good. I believe it was one of Fish's better matches. Guevara easily got the win here just because you know, he just won the title. Is he really going to lose? And he got beat up by Lambert's Goonies. That's what I'm going to call them. Lambert's Goonies. As my phone's falling up for no reason over there. And in Miami next Saturday, it is the men of the year. And one of the UFC guys versus Guevara, Jericho, and Hager. I'm not a fan of the Lambert storyline. I don't know if I said this on this channel, but I've said it on mine. I'm not really a fan of the whole UFC MMA kind of background. I hate that. So this storyline is really not appealing to me, especially because now you're bringing MMA superstars to like compete in a ring. So not looking forward to it. I mean, Lambert's a fantastic heel, but Jesus. <laughs> but I mean, I guess it makes sense. Should be fun. And then I complete. So now, actually, this was my question. Bill and I were actually trying to figure this out. So if someone watching this can answer this. So does that mean that for the next two weeks, Rampage is going to be before Dynamite? Because the next two Dynamites are on a Saturday because of hockey. So the 16th, which I'm supposed to be in Baltimore, I'm really not. I'm not. And the 23rd are Saturday edition Dynamites. So are we not getting Rampage on Friday? Are we still getting Rampage on Friday? Are we get four hours of AEW on Saturday. Someone can answer that'd be highly appreciated. Bill and I were trying to figure it out. Bill and, I, Bill and I were like, hmm. And then the 23rd is also really interesting because the 23rd, I believe they're going live from the cruise for part of the part of it. Then you have them actually in Orlando. 
And then Bound for Glory is at 10 o'clock. So to October 23rd is just a wrestling day. Oh, and of course I'm working all day. That's great. But in better news, the TBS Women's Championship. So I have said on countless podcasts over the last five months, um, I've brought this up to multiple, multiple, multiple superstars about a second woman's title. And I am so freaking happy they did it. I know a lot of people are like, oh, they should have done tag titles or, oh, they should have done this. The tag titles don't make sense because the only two tag women's tag teams that you have in AEW right now are Ty J and Penelope and Allie. And you're going to run into the same problem that Debra Lee's having right now where you're taking people out of the women's championship picture and forcing them into a tag team title picture. So it doesn't make sense. With the second woman's title, it makes a lot of sense because there are so many individual women who aren't necessarily featured every week. Like someone like Ty Conti, who's the face of Dark Elevation, can now be the face of TBS with this TBS championship. You know, the TNT title essentially is like the Intercontinental US title for Debra Bui. So this is like the woman having a US or Intercontinental Championship in Debra Bui. It gives the mid-card woman something to do instead of sitting on the sidelines and just waiting to first Brit and lose. It gives them something to do, it gives more secondary storylines, and it gives way more time for the woman. This is a fantastic opportunity. I was hoping some company did it. I am very happy it was AEW. Thank you. And I mean, a good day for women's wrestling, actually, because WOW is back. Women of Wrestling's back. AJ's an executive producer. She's a commentator. Tessa Blanchard. Such a good day. Such a good day to be a women's wrestling fan. Whew. We're going off the rails. Uh, Darby Allen versus uh, Nick Camarado, which I found kind of interesting that they actually, um, this was like a last minute match, and we haven't seen much of the factory really since a go-go lost. So that's really interesting to me. I know a go-go is actually like healing up a lot of injuries right now, whether it was stuff that he got, he got hurt in the Cody match, or maybe he just, um, did maybe just nagging injuries from training or whatever. So it was very interesting to see the factory. It's like, oh. And then, too, how, like, you know, Darby and MJF are having their match next week. And all these people in masks, like, come out disguised and attacking, like, Darby. And I'm like, who are the... I'm like, oh, it's the Pinnacle. Oh, right, they're a faction. Like, it... So that's, like, the thing that, like, kind of gets me annoyed is, like, AEW has all these factions, but you don't mention them every week, so you forget. Like, when was the last time we've actually seen the Inner Circle together since they won a double or nothing? Or when was the last time we saw the Pinnacle all together besides last night? You haven't. So that was kind of, that was kind of odd for me. I don't know. But, I mean, I guess that's just uh, Sheeta and Serena Deeb. This, I will argue, probably was Sheeta's best match in AEW. I think that Deeb really made Sheeta sign. This was a fantastic match. I mean, there was parts in the middle where it was kind of like sloppy or slow, but that's okay. This was Deeb's first match, I believe, shoulder surgery? Shoulder surgery, yeah. Or knee surgery. One of those two. Um, but this match is really good, and shockingly, even though they made Sheeta a trophy, she lost. Never expect the predictable with AEW. WWE, yes. AEW, no. This match was really good. It very much reminded you that Deeb's a heel. Deeb is not a face. If you remember back for the Double or Nothing pre-show when she wrestled Riho, they were hinting at a heel turn. So now the heel turn is real, so keep that in mind. I could definitely... Um, I could see her actually winning the TBS title first. Either her or Ty need to win. I would say, like, oh, she's a top contender for Britt, but Britt's also a heel, so oof. But I could definitely see that match. Maybe a full gear, maybe revolution. I could definitely see them trying to build deep up to the top of the women's division again now that she's healthy. So that'd be really cool. And this casino ladder match. This casino ladder. So I love the casino ladder match. I like that they do the, the ladder match or the battle royal at least like kind of every special or every pay-per-view just because it gives you something to look forward to and like okay we're gonna cry a number one contender at this pay-per-view so you're not sitting here like oh i wonder what kenny's gonna be doing like you're going to know that night so this field was very interesting to me because they they like orange cassidy okay and he was accompanied by the um the lion the phillies uh lion mascot for the basketball team I mean, Gritty would have gotten more over, but whatever. I guess we couldn't get it, Gritty. So you had Arch Cassidy and Pac and then John Moxley, Lance Archer, Matt Hardy, Andrade, and Adam Page. 
So it's a lot of different styles and I completely forgot they did intervals for this ladder match. That it, like Pac and Kathy came out and they're like, oh, like five minutes. And I'm like, oh, okay, it's odd. But the pop for Paige was absolutely defining. You knew that the Joker was Paige. It, not that it was obvious, but it, it, it all signs were pointing to him. I think if it wasn't Paige, it had to be a bigger name. It would have to be, I don't even know. Because I remember even like I had ex Bill, I'm like, if it's not Paige, who would it be? And we were trying to think of a name and we were like, Malachi Black? Miro? Brian? So this made total sense. Um, Paige looks really good. I mean, for those who didn't know, the reason Paige was out was because his wife had a baby. So congrats to him. And that's also why Ethan Page was not on Diamond Mike this week either, because Ethan Page's wife was having a baby. But this match was really good. I'm excited. Page won. But now my question is, because this is what the, usually happens with this match, does this mean the October 23rd episode of Dynamite on the cruise, it's going to be Paige and Omega, or are we going to hold out the full year? Because usually with the Casino, Battle Royal, or Ladder Match, or whatever they do, it's always like a two weeks away. So I don't necessarily know if it's going to be at, like, to me it makes sense if it's the October 23rd Dynamite, it just makes total sense. But then, who's Omega facing at full gear? I don't see him winning, like, I don't see Paige winning October 23rd, but I don't know. It would be interesting, I will admit. It would be very interesting to see what happens. But Diamond was really good. I mean, obviously there was a little... There were some spots where it was like, ooh, rough. I definitely think they rushed the ending of the ladder match because I think Paige came out at like 9.55 and you have five minutes to kind of like showcase Paige and like get the, all the momentum and stuff. So timing is still an issue for AEW. But of course I can't go to three hours because that would just... It, it would be like Monday Night Raw. So I was thinking maybe if they go two and a half, maybe that last half hour would help them. But, I don't know. <laughs> but, that's it for me. So now, Saturday, we got SmackDown and Rampage. And, um...